Hello everyone, welcome back to the L20 programming class with the last video. In this video, we will write programs with the same part using different G600 mode and basically we will use G630 and G660 and I hope you enjoyed it and let's start. Alright, now we're going to start writing the program from the beginning and that's part that we're going to try to program today. First, before we start writing any program, I need to ask myself what side of the part I want to start first and what side of the part I want to start last. Or simply answer what side of the part I want to start on the main spindle or what side of the part I want to start on the sub spindle. For me, that, that part right there I will start with the long body right there and basically I just use the normal collet and then come in and wrap on the long body. If you want to start the other way and then you either have to wrap on the thread side and have the part hanging out really long or you have to use the over rib collet to go over the big side diameter of the part and then also wrap on the long body so for me it's easier to go this way so to start writing the program we're gonna need the name for the program so right now I give the name for the program is zero and I have number maybe number one and I give it the name is knockout bean okay Maybe give it a little bit more information about what side of the material I want to use. So I'm going to use 500 brass material. Alright, now we can start writing the program. Beginning of the program, whatever the program, I want to give it some safety codes. So I want to make sure that I cancel anything that I don't need just like the syncing between main spindle and sub spindle with G113 and then after that M9 is cancel the bar loader and then after that we have G99, G40 and then G18 basically a set inch per revolution and then cancel the tunnel radius come and say and then also start uh, setting the plan for cutting is X and Z when we're done with this we can close the collet close the main spindle collet and then turn on the coolant by M52 and then give it the start position with G50 Z all right, right here, it depends on if you're gonna use left hand cut up or the right hand cut up. For me, I will use the left hand cut up for this one because, because I want to get close to uh, as much as possible to the sub spindle. So I will use the left hand call, uh, cut up. So left hand cut up, the shank is gonna be 625 minus for the width of the cut up 118 in this case I just throw out some number okay and then we will leave 5000 for facing and then that's it we have the start position right here if you want you can take a note and say start position all right and then after the start position we're going to move the tool away in order to clear so we're going to do G0 X.6 so 600,000 so 100,000 away from the material so that's safe also I will retract the bar right here with Z minus 50,000 and then I will use a function of the machine is really good for checking tool break detector is M51 it will check if to see okay if the part is not separate from the last cycle or not okay and then after this we can call 
G630. You can use different uh, G600 mode, but with this example right here, I want to use G630 in order to do simultaneously machining mode. So after this, we can turn on the main spindle with some RBM. So 1500 RBM is kind of reasonable for me. And then before doing anything, I will give the machine a good face by using the turning tool. So the turning tool in this case, I will use the tool number two. And then I will say, okay, facing. Okay, facing. And then after uh, index the tool, I will use G0x.6, Z minus 50,000, and then T02. Also, turn on the offset right there. Okay, if you want to give the tool some information, then you can give it right here and then say, okay, I'm using uh, the insert 80 degree with 8,000 corner radius. And then maybe tell the um, operator or setup guy, okay, I'm going to use two no common say. So put four into T column into data set. So right there, so he has some information to do when he do the setup. After that, we need to decide either we want to use the constant surface footage or not. If yes, and then we have to turn up the fluctuation on the main spindle. And after that, we will set the speed limit for the main spindle with G50 and then turn on the constant surface footage by G96. Since it pressed, so I'm going to use 900 constant surface footage. Then I will move it to Z0 before I can start like cutting it. And then G9, G1, G99 also turn on the two no compensate and then go all the way to 50,000 with a feed rate 3,000. After I done, I move it off the face and then you can use a bigger feed rate. And after this, I will just like pull the tool out of way. But before that, I have to turn off the tool no compensate by just moving out a little bit further and then G0 X.6 Z minus 0 0.5 and then cancel the offset right there. So that's we finished one tour. Now we're gonna go to the next tour. It's gonna be the spot tour. So the spotting tour I'm gonna put it at station number 11 and then also I want to cancel this. Alright, so cancel the constant surface footage by G97 and then M96. You know, turn on the fluctuation again. Alright, so T11 right here, we can say spot reel 90 degree. All right, so the spot reel, maybe I want to run a little bit slower. So 4,500 right there. And then I will position the tool to center and then start away from the face about 50,000 and turn on the offset. And then I will use, I will jump it forward a little bit before I start thrilling it because I don't want to thrill air. And then G1, G99, Z.010. I want to thrill it 
in a little bit very slow so I can have it straight and then I will start going in a little bit further so this hole is a hundred and sixteen so we want to go a little bit bigger than 116 so we have chamfer nice and neat so maybe we can run um, okay 190 so 190 is gonna be uh, z point 190 divided by 2 is gonna be 95,000 with a feed rate 003 after I'm done at the bottom right there, I have draw time a little bit G4 U.5 before I pull out. So G0 V minus 5000 and cancel the tool. And then the next tool we're going to use the T12 in order to thrill it. You can say, okay, thrill point. 166 diameter okay and then with the thrill right here maybe we can run it around you know 3500 3 s1 equal 3500 okay and then we can use the uh, g83 can cycle for deep drilling hole so right here we can decide either we're gonna thrill all the way through but then if you want to thrill all the way through you have to put it on um, the T20 um, station with T12 we might have only uh, one inch something so maybe I'm gonna go one inch and 335 so about a little bit over half of the part so we'll see, let's go to G0, X0, Z minus 0 0.05, T12. And then G83, Z, like I said, is 1.35. And then we're gonna pack it with uh, 100,000. So it press, so you can pack with the full uh, diameter. So maybe 150. Okay, but before I want to start packing, I want to jump it over. So with R, maybe 30,000. So jump over 30,000 and start packing from there. Feed rate, I can do 2,000. And after I done, I will cancel it with G80. And then move it out again, G minus 0. And then cancel the tool right there. Now after we finish the thrill, we can start, start turning the OD by using the tool number 2. So I'll go back to tool number 2, T00, but this time I will go OD turn. So I will use OD turn and then same thing, I'm going to use the uh, same information up here. So all I need to do is just copy the whole thing from here and then go down here and copy it and paste. Okay, and then I'm going to turn up again the fluctuation and then set the uh, speed limit as about maybe 6000. Okay, and G96 again as 900. Okay, and after that, I'm gonna position it before cut. So the hole is already throw out 166. So I can go to G0x.15, Z minus 0.20,000 right there. And then I will start cutting. G99 and then turn on the two nodes compensate the G0 feed rate maybe 2000 and then the diameter right here we can either uh, decide 
to put a chamfer or the radius at the corner when it comes to the long body. So we have a function, it's called comma radius or comma c. We can use it x point. The diameter is uh, 315, so 315. And then comma, maybe put the radius in here, about 20,000. And then at the radius right here, if you want, you can use E. So the radius, uh, the feed rate at the radius right here is go down to 1000 by revolution. And it's only effect on that light only, but it will not change the feed rate for the whole um, program. So right here, and the Z length is going to be 2.04. 72 minus 4590. Okay, so it's become uh, all right 1.4567. Okay, so I got G1 Z 1.4567. All right, and then after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a chamfer right there. Right, chamfer right there, and then it is about 39.3. Okay, so we're gonna go x point uh, the diameter right there. Okay, one three nine three six, and we're gonna move with incremental, so it's three nine three. Okay. And then after that, we're gonna turn like a little bit further than that. So it is about 590. So we can turn a little bit further because we need to mill it. So that section right there, okay, we can move about 20,000. And then that's enough. And then after that, we're gonna have to go to um, the, the maximum diameter. So x point five w point maybe thirty thousand, and then we're gonna pull the tool out and then also cancel um, the tool no readers compensate. So g point twenty w minus point ten thousand, and then after that we're gonna pull the tool out. Let's see. Uh, we don't need Z right here. We just cancel it. So we just move straight on the X axis and then turn up uh, the offset. That's it. So next we want to uh, use the live tool. So that we're gonna turn cancel the constant surface footage. Turn back on this and then M5 to turn it up. And then after that, we're gonna do use the tool number uh, seven to um, mill it. So turn on the live tool M80 and then S3 equal. So we can run around 4500 um, right here. And then we say T0700. And then we say, okay, what the end mill size we can use? Maybe quarter inch. So quarter inch end mill. And then you can use four flutes if you want. Okay. To use a live tool, we have to ship the Z0 to the center of the end mill. So to ship that, we're going to use G50 and then ship on the Z axis. So we're going to use the incremental of Z is W and then the distance going to be 5905. And then I want to shift it one more time to the face, uh, to this side of the end mill. So in my program, the number is going to make more sense. So I will use G50 again, W and it's half side of the end mill, so 125. Okay, and then I will position the tool by G 0x6, and then 
the position is um, one about one in six hundred and eighty it's already past it and then I have to move on the side of the part with the y axis so maybe y is six hundred and fifty because the diameter of the material is uh, about five hundred and we have this one is two fifty so seven fifty but we already milled it down a lot so maybe 650 is good enough so Z point one point six eight T seven and then we want to go down to um, position of the uh, flat right there so we're gonna have one cut since it's brass so we have X point 315 and then we have G1 G98 since it's live tour so we move with inch per minutes and then Y minus 0.650 with the feed rate maybe 10 inch per minute and after we done we're gonna just flip to the other side by moving 180 degree um, but right here we can lock the spindle as well at the beginning right here with E02 and then right here we're gonna go T0 X point six and then we're gonna flip at 150 and 180 degree and that and after that we're going to position it again x.315 and then g1 again cutting with y axis and after we're done we can just move it up x.6 and then turn up and then turn up the light tool by m82 Also, we have to put it back the shift G50 W minus 125 G50 W5905. The back side right here, we can use the back turn to rub it out a little bit. So, the back turn, I maybe have put it on the station number three and then say, okay, back turn. So the back turn normally I use it had to ship from this side to the tip is about 118 but it depends on whatever the uh, side that you have so you're gonna put in there so I say okay 118 shipped and then uh, 4,000 maybe for the corner radius Okay, we want to turn on the main spindle two by M three S one E core. So this maybe we run about mm, forty five hundred. That's good enough. And then we're gonna ship. But that is about minus one hundred and eighteen right there. Okay, and then we're gonna position the tool G six. And then Z um, right here we can go to like 1.6535 okay 1.6535 and then turn on the offset okay from here we can just start cutting and then also turn on the tunnel radius compensate G99 okay and then go down to the, the X diameter is 35 okay feet rate go 2000 by revolution and when and then we can turn along okay all the way to two inch and a hundred and it's good enough it's already past the 
part length. Okay. And then we can pull to the diameter side. Okay, x point five, w point twenty five, and then turn it past a little bit, you know, to deburr uh, the chips. So when we pull it back, so it's not gonna get stuck. So maybe right here twenty thousand, and then cancel tunnel radius compensate with uh, u point twenty. W minus 10,000 and then we can pull it up x.6 and then cancel the tool right there alright and done now all we have to do is just come in and then cut off the tool and then that's it so right here we can call the tool T0100 and say okay cut off and we let it know okay maybe we use 118 cut up width with insert right there right so before we move it in we need to shift it with the full holder since we're using the left hand so 625 and then now we turn on the spindle, you know, to sync it. 24s2 equal 500. As you can see right here, I have the main spindle turned on clockwise, but I have the sub spindle turned on counterclockwise. But if you can think, two spindle at face to face like this, so one of them have to run in the counterclockwise in order to have both of them running in the same rotation. So right here, that's the reason why I have the sub spindle running in the counterclockwise. After that, we're gonna turn on the sync between main spindle and sub spindle by G114, H1, D-2. And after that, we confirm the sync by M77. And then we're gonna go to the position by G zero X point six, and then the part length is two inch forty seven and two ten. We we'll leave five thousand for the backside to clean it up, and then turn on the offset right there. And before we turn into a G six hundred and fifty mode, we have to cancel the uh, workship so G50 W.11.5 um, and then we can come in with G500 at uh, G650 right here we're gonna put the wait command in order to wait for the sub spindle to come in and pick it up the part and then after we're done with that we can turn on the main spindle again 4500 and then we can start cutting down in x.5 feed rate maybe 2000 and a half okay when we cut it down and we can do is we can stop sinking right here and then after that we're gonna stop main spindle and stop sub spindle right there after we turn it off we're gonna leave it dwell a little bit and then we can turn on the main spindle slowly with 100 rpm and we wait a little bit more before we using M50 in order to check for the rotation on the sub spindle. So right now, imagine if the part is already separate from the main spindle. If you turn on the main spindle, the sub spindle is not support to rotate because the part is already cut up. 
So right here, if M50 is seeing any rotation in the subspindle, it will stop the machine and say, hey, something happened with your cutoff. Check it. So right here, we have M50 done. So we can use G600 to um, send the subspindle home. And then after that, we have M8 and M8. I already explained why we have two M8, just because we want to confirm for the end of the bar. And uh, we have two M8, so M98, and then the par below the program right here. And then we have M9, just to cancel it. And then after that, we have M5 and turn up the rotation of the main spindle and then we're gonna have uh, M7 to open the main spindle collet and then move back to the start position so the start position we have is 625 minus 118 minus 5000 right there and then also turn off the offset and then we will have G999 and then N999 and then N2 M99 so that's it we already done one side of uh, the program so now we're gonna move to the other side in order to um, start working on dollar side two, um, but before that, in G999 and N999 right here, we can put something in here in order to um, run the last part program. So usually I would put in here G600, and then I also use G600 on the other side to run the last part by the subspindle. And before we stop, we have M56 to have part counter. That's M2. Okay, the subspindle, we're gonna start right now with T30 right here. And then we put G50, Z0, just have it uh, a start position for the subspindle. And then remember we use G600 in order to have the simultaneously machining mode. So we put right here G630 in the subspin in the dollar side two. We're gonna use um, sub program. So we're gonna put right here H1000. So M98 right here is tell the machine go look for the block number or the sequence number 1000 down below and then run whatever it has inside the sub program and after you're done come back right here and keep running again so we have M98 and this one done and so after that we're gonna go into G650 mode because we have nothing else to do right here so and remember again, G650 mode also acting as a queuing code. So when the subspindle get to here, and if it finishes first before the main spindle, it's just waiting right here until it see the same G650 on the other side, and we're working together again. So G650, and we will command the subspindle to move into a hundred thousand. Just wrap it to a hundred thousand away from the face of the part, and after that we're gonna feed it in with a feed rate. And uh, in this case, how much we want to go in? So that part right here is a hundred, one inch, six hundred something. So we can go in just one inch and six hundred, and it's good enough. So Z one inch six hundred. The feed rate you can go about 80 inches per minute 
Oh, but before that, I forgot we need to open the subspindle collet right here. And then after it's going to the position, we're going to put the dwell time right here to make sure it go into uh, the, the position that we want. And then we're going to close the collet right here. After we close the collet, remember on dollar side one, we have a queuing code. So it's 650. So right here, I tell the machine, okay, I tell the main spindle, okay, right here, we're ready. So you can start cutting. So after that, this one start cutting and then do whatever it needs to do. And finally, we're going to cancel it with G600 to send sub spindle home. So after send the sub spindle home, we have nothing else to do but the G, uh, the last part programming. And then inside the last part programming, we're going to use G600 in order to match up with uh, the other side. And we're going to use a, a sub program to call the same program that working for the back side above. And then after that, we have M2, M99, and it's done. But now we need to write the sub program for uh, the back side. So the sub program, we're going to start with the SQL number is N1000. In the sub uh, spindle, what we're going to do is we're going to have to use the left hand boring bar in order to turn the OD and then we also have to do a threading and we have also to have the spot and then we also have to thrill it and uh, eject it and then that's it. So the first one we're going to do, okay, we're going to use the station number um, 31. So one turn on the spindle S2. Okay, 4500 and then tool 31. We say okay, left hand boring bar. Okay, right there, and then uh, give it some information. Maybe we we'll use 35 degree and uh, zero eight thousand uh, corner radius. I also want to uh, use the constant surface footage for this tool so that's why I have to turn up the uh, uh, fluctuation for the sub spindle by M95 and then uh, set the limits for this tool and then turn on the constant surface footage by G96 and then after that I can position the tool X point um, so this one 393 so we go 450 is good and then turn on the offset right there going to G0 and then also uh, start cutting right here and turn on the two no radius compensate x minus 0 5 feet rate 2 okay so after that we're gonna pull out and then cancel uh, the two no radius compensate so w minus point zero two and cancel to no radius compensate right there and then I want to position it to turn the uh, chamfer so I go to G0 X point two right there and then G1 G41 and then uh, what is the diameter okay uh, that one, uh, three, one, four, okay. And then so again, move to Z0 with the feed rate, uh, five, 
and then we can use x.314 with the chamfer right here maybe 3000 and then we're going to move into the z is 3347 with the chamfer is also 3002 so right here that's why we use 35 degree uh, insert because we want to uh, plunge it down on this side uh, without using two tool like one drop and one finish so right here and then we're gonna go to the Z position is about three nine uh, three seven then go to the X diameter is three nine three six with the radius the radius right here about 15,000 and then we're going to move a little bit over in order to have it done and then right here cancel it G40 U 20,000 U minus 10,000 and move the tool out of the way G minus and T0 so that's it, we're done with the tool turn OD. So now we're gonna do a, a spot drill. So spot drill M23 S2 equal 500 and then T32 and say right here spot drill right, 90 degree. 90 degree okay and then we're gonna go to the position x0 z minus 5000 t 32 same thing we want to move it forward we don't want to cut air g1 g99 z um, we using okay same thing in the front uh, 95 feet rate maybe before that I want to move in 10,000 first to have it straight after that we're going to dwell right here and then we're just moving out cancel the tool that's it we're done next tool going to be uh, the thrill, so we have N22 as 2 again equal maybe 2500 and then T33 saying okay thrill 0 0.166 0 0.166 diameter the other side we already thrill one point uh, three five so this side we're gonna drill maybe another inch and that should be like enough or maybe a little bit more one inch so maybe one inch and a hundred so it should be enough so let's see right here G0 X0 Z minus 5000 T 33 and then we also use can cycle 1.1 q 150 r you want to jump forward before that feed rate 2000 and after that we're going to cancel it and then we'll move out and then cancel the offset and then that's it we have the thrill done also as well and now the last thing we have to do is just a threading uh, cycle. So threading cycle, you know, we already talked about when, uh, and I hope we agree with each other that we're going to use G76 for most of the purpose of threading. So we're using T33, 
34 right there and then it said OD threading M23 S2 equal so since it brass I can thread it really fast with 1000 RBM so G0 X.6 Z minus 100,000 so with the thread I want to start it a little bit farther away about at least a hundred thousand okay and then again T76 P I uh, want one pass for fitness I want zero uh, percent of lead to come out and then the angle come in compound angle come in is 60 uh, degree and then I have one to have minimum uh, cutting is 3000 the last part uh, finish allowance is 510 G76 again X um, this one is M8 1.25 so M8 1.25 the finish diameter is uh, 2546 0.2546 so Z length is 300 and the P is gonna be 30, 20, and the Q uh, is going to be 30,000 right here. And the Q, the first pad I can run 10,000. The feed rate uh, is going to be 4, 9, 2, 1. And after that, I just pull it out G0, X.6. And then Z minus 100 inch and cancel the tool. So right here I'm done. All I have to do to eject the part. So all I have to do M25 to turn up sub window, and we have the can cycle for eject the part is M34. And after we're done, we use M99 in order to loop back to the main program. And that's it. We already done with the program writing for this part with G630, which is um, simultaneously machining mode, running front and back at the same time. Okay, so next way we're gonna use a G660. So I'm going to use the same program right here in order to change it and turn it into G660. So the first tool is going to be the same as facing right here. But then when you come to the spot drill, you have to put it right here, G660. If you want to use G660 and after you're done, with the drill right here, you have to come back with G630. And then that's it. In the back side right here, in dollar side 2, we have to change the way we programming for the sub program. So the first tour, maybe we're still using this one with G630. But the next tool is the drill tool. We have to use G660. So we're gonna have to return from the sub program right here and then also give another sequence number right here. And then the sequence number right here is including two tool as the spot drill and the drill. And then we're going to need another sequence number right here. And then in the main program right here, we're going to have to call more than one sequence, uh, one, more than one sub program. So H, that one, the one we have to do H1200. Okay. So that's simple enough that we change and it's working. 
and all we have to do right here we put G660 and down here go back to G630 right here and then that's it but then for the last part programming we have to programming in a different way because right now in the back spindle we're gonna use G660 in order to call the tool in the back side but then and as I know before I told you before already when you use G660 you have to call the tool parallel that means either when you using the tool in the back side only but you still have to call the tool in the front side I forgot to change the tool right here also is 51 right here 51 52 52 okay so in the last part program right here we're going to start with the main spindle with the main spindle we can start right here by giving it a stop position using G50 and we can close the collet with M6 giving it a dwell time after we close the collet then we will have to uh, retract the material on the main spindle right here and the reason why is when we call the tool 11 to the position if we have any material is hanging out from the material on the main spindle it will be interfere with the tool so retract it with a hundred thousand so and then we can start following the same process with the main spindle using G630 after we done with the G630 we will start with G660 G660 like I explained before we need to call the tool parallel from the main and the sub spindle so right here we have the tool call in the sub spindle is tool 51 and 52 so the main spindle we have to call tool 11 and 12 even when we don't use it at all so we finished G660 we will end the program with G630 G630 before we end the program we need to put the machine back to the start position because right here we already retract the material back a hundred thousand in order to put the machine back to the start position we need to wait for the sub spindle to be done whatever it needs to be done in order to wait i put a queuing code right here with the l number and then I will use the tool number one to position it but before position it I will turn on the main spindle and then position it and turn on the offset also right here we're using the left hand cut off so we have to push it out like 625 in order to have something for the cut up to face it up and then we will start cutting right here with the feed rate 2000 after we are done with that we're gonna turn up the main spindle and then open the main spindle collet using M7 give it a draw time and then move the spindle back to the start position also cancel the tool offset right there that's how we done for the last part program using G660 on the main spindle with the sub spindle we're gonna do the same thing by follow exactly the order with G630 running the sub program 1000 and then G660 running the sub program 
1100 and then and would g 630 running the sub program 1200 and before we end we have to match up what uh, the main spindle side with the queuing code with same queuing code L515 and then that's how we end with the last part program using G660 on both sides however I have a better way to write the last part program even the main spindle we're using G660 so for the last part program on the main spindle right here we will replace all the mode and the tool call just by G600 because G600 allow you to call the tool T50s to work for the sub spindle without having to call the tool on the main spindle same thing in the back side right here I will delete everything right here and here and just replace it with G600 alright we just finished writing the program uh, for the same part using different G600 mode which is G630 and G660 also with the last part program as well I really appreciate that you hang on to the last minute because I know that it get more complicated when it gets to the end so I hope you all the best and uh, I want to see you success in writing your old program in the future but for now I'm gonna say goodbye and that will be it for the L20 programming class thank you bye bye